In today's video, you've dropped your calories to 1500 and you still can't lose body fat. I'm gonna explain exactly how to proceed to ensure that fat loss keeps happening. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Parvella from ProPhysique.com and I am a coach. I help people lose body fat. I help people who are stuck and I really wanna help you guys reach your goals and so I love answering these questions that you guys are sending. If you comment below or send it to my Instagram, direct message, you're more likely to get a response on Instagram, by the way. But if you do that, I'm gonna give you some feedback. I'm gonna to talk to you because I've been doing this for a long time and I've got a lot of answers to a lot of problems. And today's question was a great one. I felt it right here. I always watch your videos on YouTube and take a lots of advice on weight loss. I'm stuck, recently had knee surgery earlier this year on April 1st, I was already back on the treadmill. My starting weight was 190 before knee surgery. Now it's 232, I'm 5'10", and I've cut down from that to 199 to 206, about two weeks added squats back into your lifting. So knee is healthy. Since then, I've been at this plateau. I'm already eating 1500 calories and I know I shouldn't drop anymore. I need help. What adjustments should I make? By the way, still getting 10 to 15,000 steps a day since April 1st, no days off. So what's going on? It's not adding up. You're 200 pounds, you're eating 1500 calories and you're not losing body fat. Or is that true? Because the only thing you told me is your weight. There are other ways that you can be losing body fat, but not losing weight. You just reintroduce squats. Now, I don't think this is the, the solution, but I do wanna offer some advice. Take measurements, take pictures. Losing body fat is very clear when you're not only looking at the scale. Pictures, how your clothing fits, measurements, those things are gonna be very impacted by fat loss. Adding muscle through something like, you know, introducing squats back into your workout. Especially if you have a history of training, if you reintroduce it, you're gonna be kind of a hyper responder. Also, have you introduced any supplements like creatine monohydrate, which increases lean body mass through the storage of fluids in the muscles to improve your performance? There are a lot of things that can be happening here, so sometimes you can't just trust what the question is, but I'm gonna address it anyway. As a coach, when I start to get concerned about my calories of my athletes, it's when it gets below 10 times their body weight. You're at, let's just say 200 pounds. So that would be about 2000 pounds. So if I have an athlete and I have to take them below 10 times their body weight in calories, I'm definitely bumping up their activity before I do that. I'm really starting to focus on steps, even more cardio sessions, and just being more accountable. Are you actually tracking your calories properly, okay? You say you're at 1500 calories, how do you know? Are you weighing all your food or are you just trusting nutrition labels when you eat out at restaurants? If you're tracking your food, which I'm gonna say, I trust you that you're doing that and you're stuck, this is where we get into this position called the conservation of energy because it really doesn't make sense. A 200 pound man who exercises and walks and can't lose weight on 1500 calories, research shows that most people overestimate their calories by as much as like 60, 70%. But I'm gonna assume, because you're messaging me, you know exactly how many calories you're taking in. So that's not the case. So what's the other reason? The other reason is that your calories are so low that you have ruined your NEAT, your non-exercise activity. Now, what is NEAT? NEAT is actually where we burn more calories throughout the day than through exercise and activity, okay? Non-exercise activity, which is things like moving your hands, things like getting up and going for, you know, doing something with your friends, getting off the couch, getting out of your chair, moving around, things that don't require you to be actually participating, but you just notice when you have good energy, you might get up and dance to a song. You might bob your head in the car. When you start to get low calories, what we do is we conserve energy. We don't get up off the couch. Fine, okay, we're fine, aren't we? No, we're all good here, mate. So, whatever it is that you're offering, we're not into it, don't care, couldn't care less. There's beer on the ship. <sighs> and what kind? We find reasons not to move. We might be listening to our favorite song and our head doesn't move. Our bodies start to conserve energy and I've seen this, I've personally witnessed it myself when I first did my first diet, I was like, why am I not losing weight? And I looked back and I realized, man, I stopped doing a lot of the things that I normally do throughout the day. 
When I worked in an office, I stopped getting up from my desk as much. I would conserve energy and only get up a few times a day to complete tasks that I needed to complete. How do you fix this? Step trackers are a great way. Sounds like you're tracking your steps. But the real reason that I think I can help you is because what stops happening when calories get very low, digestion slows, and the hormones can suffer a little bit. And what do I mean by hormones? Hormones are actually going to kick off things in our body like metabolic rate, okay? Things like testosterone and thyroid are negatively impacted, especially when carbohydrates are very low. Don't know what your macros are, you didn't tell me. However, if you're at 1500 calories, seven days a week, doing this cardio and you're not losing weight, what I would do is I would introduce at least one, if not two high carb days per week. Meaning, I would keep your calories around 1750, but that 250 extra calories would come in the form of just carbohydrates. Why? Carbohydrates are just great for energy. They are great for metabolism. They are great for performance. But those squats, you're gonna squat a little better. 250 calories is not a lot on a given day, but what happens is it kicks off a, a situation where you, you might sleep a little better, you might produce hormones a little bit better. And what I've seen is through my years, you can simply add a high carb day and I might even add two in and you can see how you respond. I've often been in a situation where I was dieting, I was stuck, I did a high carb day, dropped two to three pounds the next day. And so I started doing it once a week. And when that stopped working, I started doing it two days a week, right? The leaner you get, the longer you've been dieting, the more need there is for an increase in calories and carbohydrates intermittently throughout the process. Now, if you don't really understand this and you're stuck and you've been trying to do this on your own for a long time, join me and my team for the 90 day transformation challenge. It's kicking off next month guys. we're giving away $25,000. It's open worldwide, 100 or more meal plans, training plans, a private support community and transformations like this. Look at these transformations I'm showing you on the screen. Why is this possible in 90 days? Why? Because they had support and they had a damn deadline. If you don't have a deadline and you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna get stuck. It's $50 to enter the challenge and we will guide you if you need coaching as well. However, I'm coaching two people for free. All you have to do is sign up. I'll announce who's getting coached as it approaches. But the idea is not everyone wants to be handheld, but everyone needs a deadline and everyone needs to know what to do. So join the challenge, guys. That's why I created it, to help people reach their goals, okay? I can only coach so many people one-on-one. -on -one. I can only put out so many videos. Join our challenge. Listen, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, there's no greater pleasure than I get than having people join that challenge. And guess what? Our last one just ended. The voting is done. I cannot wait to show you the before and afters. I cannot wait to share with you some of their stories, okay? We'll probably have them on my podcast. If you're not watching my other channel, the Pro Physique Studio, I do my podcast on there. I also do some bodybuilding style content for my competitors. I try to keep this more mainstream, but you guys get the message. Add in a refeed day. If you don't know where your calories should be, go to my free macro calculator. And if you have questions, specific questions about your diet, comment below. I'll reach out and I'll try to answer that for you. But yeah, if you're stuck, change it up. Add in a refeed. Make sure you're actually being accurate with your diet. And if all else fails, just reach out to me for some one-on-one -on -one coaching. I promise I'll get you there. All right, guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.